Hi everyone and welcome to chip episode 2 of Chips and a Chair Poker Chip Vlog. Before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to uh, thank and show some love for everyone that's shown some love for the channel and the first episode thus far. Uh, the response and feedback has been really positive, so I'm really thankful for that. Um, and yeah, I guess the consensus is that there's definitely not enough chipping content on YouTube, so in that respect, I'm more than happy to oblige. Uh, as you can see, today's episode is going to be about what we love the most about chipping, or most of us do, uh, Paulson Clay poker chips, more specifically whether they are worth the money because if you're new to this hobby or you've been doing it a long time you know that they are not the cheapest poker chips on the market by any stretch of the imagination um but i guess that generally in life you get what you pay for and uh, the best things in life you have to pay a premium for and that's certainly no different uh when it comes to poker chips uh so today i'm actually going to be making the case for and against uh, them being worth the money, starting with the case against. Come on, guys, it's not worth it. Okay, so at absolute face value, of course, Paulson poker chips are not worth the money. What did you say? They are expensive, make no mistake about it. Um, and I guess the price point issue is the only real argument against that I'm going to make today. Um, because that's, in my opinion, the only real negative to them. Um, to give you an idea of pricing, ignore the labels that I've put on the ones at the back. Um, so I think I paid for these purple ones, I think they were $3 each. These ones in the middle, the blue ones, are actually uh, $1 chips from... Paris Casino in Las Vegas. So hot right now. Theoretically, um, you can get those uh, for a dollar a piece. Uh, then the ones on the left are from a closed casino called the Outpost Casino. Um, and I think they were about $2 each, if I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, doing the maths quickly, one of those uh, $3, one of those $1. That's two pulls and poker chips for $4. Comparing that to this rack of plastic chips that I put the labels on, excluding the label cost, these cost $4 for the entire rack. Um, so that gives you um, perspective as to what you're getting for the money and then the argument uh, based on that price is, well, what's the point of paying more for, um, significantly more for Paulson poker chips when you can get a lot more poker chips that do exactly the same job? And that's a valid, valid argument. Of course it is. But then I guess that brings me on to the pretty lengthy case for them being worth the money. I know all the reasons I shouldn't be here. But sometimes reasons don't matter. Let's face it. Hobbies, as a rule of thumb, can get expensive. They are not cheap. But in the grand scheme of things, I actually don't think as a hobby, Paulson poker chips, or, you know, whether it's a hobby or, or whether you intend to use them, which I'll get onto in a bit, I really don't think they're that expensive in the grand scheme of things. I mean, you know... People pay millions of dollars for Mickey Mantle baseball cards. Those sorts of things, people are just buying those uh, and they're going to keep them and preserve their condition. Um, and they collect them, which is fine. I've got no problem with that at all. But at least with Paulson poker chips, the majority of people are actually going to be putting these to use. Um, so I guess in that respect, it's one of those hobbies that yes, you are spending money on, but you're also getting a lot of use and enjoyment out of it. Um, as far as using them and the social side that comes with playing poker and not that I ever need to justify buying these chips, but the way I look at it is 
if I'm putting these into play in my home games, which I am, and I'm making profit on cash games, on tournaments, then this hobby, if you're a winning poker player, it kind of pays for itself, I guess. So for me, those are, are sort of big arguments for them being worth the money. And then when people argue that you're paying absurd amounts for what are essentially um, round clay discs, and that's a pretty tired argument, in, in my opinion, because it's supply and demand. And if people are willing to pay for something, um, then yes, it does make it worth the money. And do we really question things that we pay absurd amounts of money for on a day-to-day -day basis the latest iphone so you've queued for three days to buy a new phone that is not going to do much more than the phone you've got at the moment at the end the walk where is something new that we all want you could make this argument that yeah you could get the most basic model of everything and get by but the nature of being a human being is that we want the best and you know, uh, most people will agree that Paulson poker chips are the absolute best in class. So I guess you've got those two arguments as to why they're worth it, um, you know, financially. Um, and then I guess the next argument that we're going to come on to, which is probably the more enjoyable one, is the way they look, feel, sound and perform. It's going to blow your mind, blow your mind. Okay, so just from an aesthetic point of view, so the way that they look, uh, the designs, the colors, the edge spots, and just the general um, sort of visual attention to detail that goes into making these chips, I mean, I think that makes them worth the price of admission alone, in my opinion, in the same way that a beautiful car is more enjoyable to drive uh good looking poker chips are more enjoyable to play with um the reason i say this is because i have uh, mainly non chippers uh who play at my home games and they always comment about how good uh the chips we use look so they just elevate the home game experience whether that's cash or or tournament play um so when we're talking about the sort of visual side of things Let's have a look at a few sort of single chips that I've got. So we've got this uh, chip from Bob Stupak's Vegas World. This is a hot stamp chip. So you can see that the hot stamp um, process has been used to imprint the um, uh, the fonts and denominations onto the chip. Absolutely love that chip. It's one of my faves. Then we've got this Palazzo Dollar. And we've got the Bally's Dollar. Um, with the same edge spot pattern. And the great thing about these dollar chips um, is that you can go into the casinos um, and take these out of the casino for a dollar and use them in your home games. Uh, this Circus Circus dollar is probably one of my favorites. Probably one of the nicest ones uh, in the world, let alone the strip. Um, yeah, that's a, an awesome one, a recent addition to their chipping catalogue, I believe. This uh, just solid one from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Obviously, that's closed now, which is unfortunate because these chips are absolutely lush. I think that's going to be replaced by, I think it's the Virgin Hotel and Casino. Uh, another one of my favourites, the Flamingo Dollar, which is just this solid baby blue colour. absolutely love the simplicity. Um, and retro sort of design on the inlay. Then you've got pretty much, well, you know, the same Flamingo dollar, but this has got the edge spot pattern. These are really highly sought after. Um, they are absolutely beautiful chips. The colors really pop. Uh, there are two different versions of these, I believe one with the standard Flamingo inlay. Um, and the even more sought after ones are the Flamingo inlay with the bird on top, like we just saw on that previous run. And then we've got uh, an example of a house mole. This is the uh, dollar chip from the old Riv Casino, the Riviera. 
Um, again, just the colors, just the simplicity and vibrancy of them. Um, they just make them worth, worth the price alone, in my opinion. Okay, so the next point that we're going to touch upon is the uh, the sound, the quality and performance. Okay, so I think the visual element aside, uh, where Pulse and Poker Chips really come into their own uh, is the performance aspect. I can't comment on other clay poker chips. Um, but yeah, these are just incredible. So all of these ones, as you can see, I've relabeled and they're the ones that I use in my home game. And I guess the performance for me can be cut into three categories. You've got the sound, the way they shuffle and the way that they cut and stack. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what a real clay poker chip should sound like. It's the quintessential clinking sound that you hear in poker rooms, casinos, big tournaments and just have a listen. It's hard to describe because it is the poker chip sound. The, from my experience, you can only really get with a pulse and poker chip. And I'm sure that's the case with other clay poker chips. Just, it sounds so satisfying. And I guess it's, Really one of the little nuances that you can only appreciate about Pulse and Poker Chips once you've got them and used them. The second thing that I absolutely love about them is the way that they shuffle. Once they're broken in a bit, they just shuffle so well, so nicely. They just feel grippy, they sound nice. Just love them. There we go, that was a good one. Okay, and last and by no means least, just the way that they stack um, and cut. Just see, they just stack so well. Let's see how high we can stack these. So this is two barrels, so 40 chips. And just super sturdy, which uh, you don't get with the chips that I showed you earlier and lots of other poker chips. Like these just stack super high. Some of the stacks that people make with them is insane. Um, yeah, like, just gives you an idea of how, just how sturdy they are, um, and how well they stack on a table. Um, so that, I guess, is about it for the, uh, the four arguments, and I think... Like I said, there are a lot more arguments for than against, in my opinion. And honestly, the one bit of advice that I would give to new chippers or people that are considering um, finding and building pulse and poker sets um, is just do it. You are going to save more money in the long run um, by getting these chips as your first set than buying two or three inferior sets before taking the plunge uh, with Paulsons. I know it might seem a bit daunting financially, but honestly, if you just save up for a bit longer, um, they are a really good investment. They hold their value well. Um, since uh, Paulson actually stopped making uh, poker chips for the home market in October, 2014, um, there is a strong likelihood that uh, they're not only, are not only going to hold their value, but increase their value, um, which you're not going to get with 
uh, a lot uh, of other poker chips on the market. So yeah, that is my main bit of advice. If you're watching this video and thinking about taking the plunge. Don't say it. Dive on in. So yeah, that's about it for chip so two. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, I've got something pretty special lined up for the next episode. So I'll see you all then.